Beginner's Guide is one of my favorite topics. I always look for Beginner's Guide to just about any topic that I'm interested in. So here's another Beginner's Guide to 48 Firewall. All right, so the very first thing that you will probably do is to move to system, adjust several settings. Let's move to settings. You can change your host name. It is preferred that you will change your host name so that you will know when something happens that it comes from that 40 gate. It comes from the network that your 40 gate actually protects. So if you work in the marketing division or the finance division, don't hesitate. Just name your 48 according to its position in the organization. The second thing that you will need to do is to set up your NTP server. You can use your 40 guard as the NTP server. You can also assign an NTP server so your 40 gate will be the NTP server for a specific interface. We will not do that, but you can do so. You will probably keep the administration settings to 443 and you can set the idle timeout. It is by default five minutes. You can change it according to your need, according to your security policy. Uh, we will not touch the Wi-Fi settings. Password policy is an important thing. You can set your own criteria to what is the length of the password. Are you using um, specific characters? Are you using uppercase, lowercase numbers, and so on? And the password expiration, and do you allow uh, password reuse? All right. Another thing that you can do is to play around with the theme of your 48 firewall. Let's just change that to Neutrino and it looks much better, at least in my opinion. You can work in a profile based mode or a policy based mode. The default mode is policy based mode. So let's just change that to policy based mode and let's just move over we will not uh, use our email service our smtp server so we will keep that for now the same the second thing is interfaces now here you create the links the different interfaces on your 48 you can see them over here you can configure the physical interface and you can also configure virtual interfaces such as VLANs. So let's just create another interface. We already have a LAN interface. Let's edit that interface. Let's name it finance since we are dealing with the finance division. All right, and here the role can be either WAN, DMZ, or LAN, or you can set it to undefined. Since it is a local area network, we will use LAN. Now, here you actually configure the IP address. That is the IP address of the interface gateway. So everyone that will connect to that gateway will get an IP address from the DHCP server that we will soon configure. So let's just set the IP address to 10.101.1.1 slash 24. So that will be the interface gateway. We can create a firewall address object of that local area network. So let's just enable that and here we will set the administrative access that is which protocols are allowed on that interface for management so we will just use http and https and we will also use ping now i have already enabled dhcp server you can set the pull the number of ip addresses according to your uh, the number of employees. So let's just set it to dot 20 and we will keep the default gateway the same as the interface IP 
the DNS server the same as the system DNS, we can actually use more advanced settings. We are not using a relay DHCP server. If we will use one, we can set the IP address here, but we will use the interface as the DHCP server. All right, so let's just see what else. We can add up additional DHCP scopes, DHCP um, options. We will not do that for now. And we can control the IP address assignment so we can reserve an IP address for specific MAC addresses. We can also block specific MAC addresses from getting uh, IP addresses. And we can only assign IP addresses to specific MAC addresses. All right, we will not use that. You can see that you have an implicit rule at the end here that actually tells your interface to assign IP addresses to unknown MAC addresses. So any MAC address that or any client that will connect will get an IP address. You can play around with that if you want to uh, keep that interface for specific MAC addresses. Now, you can enable device detection. That way your FortiGate will use different algorithms to recognize which devices are actually moving through uh, that interface, uh, either Windows device, Android devices, Mac devices. Uh, it does so using the MAC address, the 24 first bits of that MAC address. It does so using a user agent. It does so using different algorithms. You can also enable a captive portal for that specific interface. Now, if you will use a captive portal, you will need to create a users and user group. So let's just disable that and we will soon enable that with a user group that we will create for those finance employees. All right, so let's just click OK. Now, let's assume that we have outsource employees that work um, in the finance division, but we do not want them to, to be on the same physical interface. We want to divide them to a specific virtual interface. To do so, we we'll use the create new interface. And now let's name our uh, VLAN finance outsource. Let's set the interface to finance. We are creating actually a virtual interface on the physical interface. Let's set the VLAN ID to 10 and let's set the IP address to um, 10.1.102.1 and we will also create an address object for that subnet. Administrative access will be HTTP and HTTPS. We will use DHCP with uh, fewer IP addresses. So let's just set it to .15. Uh, if we want to be more strict, we can bind MAC addresses to specific IPs. And we can also just right click and we can also block unknown MAC addresses. So that's the way that you can assign or block different MAC addresses from connecting to that interface. We will not do so. Uh, we will set device detection, of course, and let's just make that okay. The next thing is to create a user group for that finance division and let's set the member let's create a new member uh, local user for now let's just name it all right so we have one local user in our finance group not now so let's just move again to network interfaces, finance, edit, and let's just enable our captive portal. We will use a local portal and we will restrict it 
to the finance group. We do not need to exempt sources, um, although we could do, the, do so if we have printers or any other device that just cannot um, enter the credentials. Okay. The third thing that we will need to do is to create a static route. And the static route we already have one here actually tells our 48 that anyone who wishes to go out, that is the default route, will do so uh, through that gateway address, which is my WAN interface. All right. The last thing is policy and objects, file with policy, create new, and let's just name that finance out. Incoming interface is our finance. Now, we can also do that for our VLAN employees. So if you need to create a file with policy for those employees that will connect to the finance VLAN, you will need to create another firewall policy. Outgoing interface is when. Now we can use the uh, address objects that we have actually created. That will be our source. That is the address object of that LAN interface. And the destination will be all. We can, of course, restrict it to different user groups, but we have already done so using the captive portal. All right, now scheduling is always service in our case will be all. All right, now as you can see, what is uh, what we have here is the central net is enabled. I will disable central net since usually, at least in small organization, we do not use central net. If you're a big organization and you're using different net options within different interface you will use central net here you will decide which security profiles would you like to enable on your traffic and let's just apply that now let's create another firewall policy for our finance outsource employees now, incoming interface is the finance out. That is the villain interface that we have created. The outgoing stays the same. It is the when interface. Now, as to source, we will use the uh, finance out address, the address object that we have used. Destination is all. Schedule is always. Service is all. And of course, you can apply which security profile that you're interested. 